Hey, welcome back to my channel, guys. Today I have Chantel with me again, and we are going to talk about what Kiwi should know when leaving New Zealand and going and traveling around the world. And this one is really, I feel very strongly about because when I talk to Kiwis and just living here for five years and just knowing what it's like here, I get really nervous for you <laughs> leaving this country and doing, you know, you and your normal stuff there. So stay tuned. It's going to be a great video. Subscribe below. Here we go. Okay, so let's talk about what Kiwi should know when they leave New Zealand. And you're gonna go travel, and a lot of you do OEs, and travel is a huge thing. And I have to say, as an American, or as someone who has traveled uh, the world, and uh, Chantel has traveled a lot more than me, uh, we get a little bit nervous thinking about all of like the way things function here, and some tips for you in traveling overseas to make sure that you don't get taken advantage of, you don't get things stolen, uh, and just kind of the mindset around how other people think and so that you can be well prepared in your travels. Okay, so the first tip we have for you is don't hitchhike. <laughs> just don't even consider it. Yes, there's so many countries that it's probably really not a good idea to do that in, and you yeah. do see that here all the time. All the time. So it is still the norm but the rest of the world has completely changed and it's not very advisable to do that no. in any other country. Do not do it. You've heard it here first. Okay. But I mean, and I'm the worst to talk because we have like gotten into people's vehicles as a family. Yes, we have too. But we've been in certain situations where we were forced into forced that. Forced to it, yeah. But you, it's not something that's advisable. But in a group is different too sure. than if you're by yourself or just two people. But just know that if you are coming into New Zealand and you feel like, well, it's really odd that people are hitchhiking, it's okay here, it's a different world. Mm -hmm. So what we wanna do in this video is to kind of prepare you guys that live in New Zealand world for what it's like in a different world. <laughs> so, okay, so don't hitchhike. The second thing we'd like to say is don't trust people. Just don't inherently trust well because in new people. zealand everyone's so friendly and helpful and willing to go out of their way to help you and in other countries yes. you just have to be a little bit aware that if they're over the top trying to help you there could be a secondary motive or yes. you're maybe about to get ripped off so just have yes, there probably your, is a secondary motive yeah just have your guards up i'm not yep. and you don't want to like make people look completely afraid or whatever of course don't be like that but right. just be a little bit more aware that it's not new zealand that it's not New Zealand, yes. And then just don't inherently trust everything that they're saying. Yeah. Just just second guess, just be a more of a critical thinker when you're coming into a different country. It's just a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's just different. Uh, and just because the, like, the core values of that society and how things run and function can be very different than they are here. Like I just, yeah, I just feel like in New Zealand you can really trust people and really trust that um, you know, people will do the right thing in a situation. Like if your phone gets dropped on a hike, or you leave your your sweatshirt somewhere, you know, like it's just it's a different world. Mm -hmm. And so just be warned. Yeah, and do and things maybe don't a little be scared. But like, yeah. I like what you said. Like don't be scared yeah. necessarily, but be smart. Yeah. Okay, and just critically think and like, oh, okay, and don't be upset if you do get taken advantage of, just learn from the situation and move on. Yeah, and a lot you know? of times if you're gonna be taken advantage of, it might be in a country where they have so little that you're just kind of blessing them anyway. You yeah. know, you gotta look at it you that way. You just gotta but be positive. For example, if you're going to take a taxi in certain countries, make yes. sure you like work out what the rate's gonna be before you even get in, because yes. That's in a good certain tip. situations it might even change while you're going. And pay attention to your like natural intuition. Oh, that's a good like idea. I have been in, in China, I've been in different places where it's like, oh, okay, I don't feel right about the situation, then change it. Okay, mm -hmm. if you feel like, I was literally like, I, we had, I think like 15 bags because we were moving back to the US and we were in China or back to New Zealand and we put everything in this van and we worked out the rate ahead of time, just like you said, With and then he, the driver started fighting with this other guy in, you know, Chinese, different language, and I don't know what they're saying, and just all the red flags just kind of like going off in my head, and like, even though it's really inconvenient, I got out of the car, got everybody out, I took all my bags out, we're not going with you, like, there's just something that's not right here, I didn't know where he was going to drive us, I don't know what he's saying, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's so just do that just follow your natural and just do what might be inconvenient just for your own good. and this kind of maybe goes into be willing to learn to fight 
Yes. And don't be your nice, natural Kiwi self. Yes. So that's a big one. So when people say, no, you can't do that in other countries, that doesn't mean that that's really no. <laughs> no doesn't always mean no. Like no means like, nah, I, no, like I'm not going to help you with this. I can't that be bothered. Doesn't, right. I can't be bothered. But like, I, it doesn't mean that you can't and that there isn't rules in place for you to be able to do something. So I, what I've noticed when I've helped Kiwis travel around the U.S. in particular or dealing with airlines or hotels and there's like, oh no, they said I couldn't do that. Okay, you can do that, <laughs> you know, but they're just, you know, you just don't, you just have to kind of do your own research, know the rules, know the ways around it and just don't take no for no. Like, so what are people like kind of brushing them off like, ah, oh, yeah, no. Yeah, they can, they can kind of sense that you, you know, <laughs> that like, oh, that, that you're going to be easygoing. You're not going to give them a hard time. Give them a hard time. Ask the questions. You don't have to be mean. I'm not asking you to be somebody that you're not, but just be aggressive, a little more aggressive and just be like, well, why is that? Are you sure that I can't do it? Is there no other way that I can do it? Just don't accept the no initially. Okay. And then ask around Google, you know, everything is out there and use that. That'll be really, really helpful to you. So no doesn't always mean no. You need to wear shoes <laughs> and a shirt wherever you go. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Almost everywhere. Everywhere. Except for Australia and maybe South Africa, but that's it. Yeah, but that's it. But so even in Australia, it can shoes. be dangerous, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. So I know it's normal. You can wear bare feet. You can kind of wear whatever to a store uh, here in New Zealand. But when you're traveling overseas, wear shoes. I heard of a guy who, first of all, he crossed like the super motorway because he was staying at a hotel and he could see the store across from where he was staying. So yeah. he like did the trek to get across this like massive highway which is not easy in the u.s yeah no. and he got there and they were like like dude where are your shoes and <laughs> he couldn't believe it. he's like what do you mean i can't come in with my shoes so you do yeah, all you, the way back you can't go in shoes. No. no shoes no shirt no service ladies and gentlemen that's the way it's run <laughs> and there's normally a sign that says that yep. so that one i would believe okay <laughs> i wonder if they put the sign up for the kiwis hmm yeah maybe yeah <laughs> <laughs> They're the ones because you guys do travel a lot and it's, it's for you. The sign is for you. Um, but also on a side note on what you just said is, okay, this is a really good tip. Like in New Zealand, the pedestrian has the right of way. And so oh, when you're in a yeah. crosswalk, you can just cross, right? Yeah. Or a zebra crossing or whatever you want to call it here. You can't, <laughs> at least in the U.S. I don't know about the rest of the world. But if you walk out into that street, you're going to get hit by the car. Okay, well... So. <laughs> It depends, like you're saying, which country. But what's yes. interesting is in New Zealand, the cars actually don't stop for you all the time unless it's a designated walk Correct. Stop. But in Correct. certain countries, people will stop as soon as you like kind of approach the road as if you're going to cross. Yes. Well, interesting. yeah, but the problem, okay, this is what my, my concern for you guys is that you're just going to walk out into the road. I can't tell you how many times I've seen, even because they're at a crosswalk, and they apparently have the right of way, they just walk right on the road. They don't look both ways. Okay, if you're in another country, look both ways. Always, yeah. Always, okay, just think about it for a second. You're a person, there's this moving vehicle that's all metal coming at you. They're gonna get a little dent and you're dead. Okay, <laughs> these are your choices. So don't, I think even in New Zealand, just be a little bit more cautious to be honest, but in another country, do not just walk out onto a crosswalk. That doesn't mean that they're definitely gonna stop for you. Okay, so that's our tip today. There you go. Um, okay, another tip is when you are traveling, put your wallet, your phone, all your keys, your most important items. What are, that's generally like we always, when we leave the house, our wallet, keys, and phone. <laughs> most important items, put in a zipped compartment. Okay, don't have them sitting in your Meaning back pocket. Meaning like a purse that's zipped and like zipped. preferably like attached you know, to you hidden away yeah hidden whatever. like or don't put, let it stick out yeah or like put your purse kind of in front of you so that you kind of you'll be shy at all times there's yeah pickpocketers and people just and they're, they're so slide good they're so good yeah always in a zipped compartment like here you see people just literally leave their phone yeah, and the then table. go order their food, and I'm like, ah, oh, I'm starting to sweat. Yeah. I'm getting stressed out. I mean, it's normal here. No one will take it. Nobody will take but it. But they will certainly do that. Not only will they not take it, but if you lost it somewhere, they will return it to you. Oh, wow. They will bring it to the place. Nice. I've over and over and over and over. And, like, people from other countries here, from India or from Asia or whatever, they're, like, they're shocked. Wow. <laughs> that these things get returned. Yeah, it's because all, it would like, never depending happen. on the country, right? Yes. And, like, even in certain countries, they say don't, 
like talk on your phone in public because someone will just grab it out of your hand. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it's like, for example, in Brazil, they were like, do not go to the ATM at night. Mm, yeah. Same with like Ecuador when I had to go to an ATM and I had two people because long story short, our yeah. daughter was in a hospital and I needed to pay in cash and I had the doctor and the nurse come with me and they literally kind of bodyguard us if I was a bodyguard getting mm. the cash out because it was nighttime. And then I was wow. going to take a taxi and they're like, no, 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 you can't just call a taxi. And then the nurse's husband came out of bed to drive me back to where I was staying because really? you couldn't even trust the taxis at that time of night. So. Just mm. be mindful that systems don't work in each country the same way. Same thing, I was in a, a grocery a store and I had my phone kind of just in my pocket, but you could see that it was there. And the security came up to me and he's like, don't keep your phone there. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. Like crazy, right? Yeah, like at night, that's a good tip. At night in a different country, just... Just be mindful that it's... Yeah, maybe not. don't travel. Mm. Don't try to get around. Yeah. I think that that's good. Mm. And then speaking of ATMs, uh, I know in New Zealand that we don't really carry cash. It's not necessary because of our pay wave system and our F-Post system, but like bring cash in other countries because that doesn't work. It's not the same. Yeah. Okay, cash is very important because you don't want to be stuck in a situation mm. where you can only get out of with cash. I know. We've okay. been in like maybe two or three really bad ones where the closest ATM was a half an hour over this crazy mountain pass oh and we were goodness. trying to get on a train at a certain time. This is in Peru and mm. we were trying to get to Machu Picchu and they had this like one little train system but they had no way to pay and it was such a challenge because you just, you were stuck and I forget even what we did. Cash. Yeah. I feel like we borrowed, I think we gave our passports to them because on the other side where the train arrived there mm. was cash. And then certain times you might be like, wow. well I've used this bank machine at this certain bank and that mm. happened to us in Guatemala and so we searched that the next stop would have that but when we got to the bank they didn't have an ATM machine they just had oh. the bank so <laughs> you're right like yeah, always have just have cash. a certain amount of cash yes. and just yeah and spread it out so here's another like helpful tip when you travel like we would have it in different compartments and different bags different amounts mm, that's because good. if something gets stolen you don't, you haven't lost all of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have a little bit over here and a little bit. If one bag gets lost or stolen, you haven't lost everything. Mm -hmm. I've heard of some people doing this. I mean, we've been like, knock on wood, we've been so like lucky when it comes yeah, to not have, being yeah. ripped off. But even I have some people who what they do is they take pictures the way they leave their stuff in the hotel room um, in case they have certain things in their suitcase that they don't want stolen. And mm -hmm. they'll take a picture so that they know when they come back if it's the same way Yes, or not. take pictures, I yes. Thought, oh, that's kind of a good idea. Yes. Yeah. Or when things get stolen, you can prove that it was yours oh, and yeah. that you had it. I always always oh, take pictures yeah. of you, your passport, your most important thing. Oh, yes. Always bring those with you, that's. This is interesting too. Always have a photocopy of your passports and your yeah. papers in a separate location than when your passports are. Yes. In case you lose your passports. In case, because yeah. you don't want to get stuck. Yeah, and you don't want to be in a spot where there's no internet or being able to communicate to Internet. whatever you need or whatever back home relying on someone who doesn't have it or whatever yeah. mm, good another one, one, one that you might not think about and we still don't know this off the top of your head but know your blood type um, oh yes because so good you know what I mean and have yes. it somewhere like I don't know I don't know how you get yeah, your Red Cross card is what we have in the US it? yeah okay well I have it in my I mean, wallet because if, okay, God forbid something happened to all five of us if we were traveling, but we actually don't have it anywhere like visible. But it's kind of important if you need a blood transfusion, yes. like at a last minute, you need to know your blood type. Yeah, and we've been in a situation before where we were calling back to Canada and it was really challenging because we were like, oh what's gosh. our daughter's blood type? And they were getting ready for a potential blood transfusion. It was scary. And I thought never oh again will God. I ever travel without knowing this information. Yes, bring cash, know your blood type. <laughs> there you go. These are such good tips. You just want to prepare for the worst. Take pictures. Yeah, no, exactly. That's good. Okay, another thing to think about is you cannot leave your kids out of eye shot. Okay, <laughs> yes. you have to have these eyeballs on your children. Don't leave your kids in the all car times. unattended. Do not leave your kids in We've the car. We've seen this in New Zealand. Even if you're just like pumping gas and then you just like ju jump up to pay real quick. No, no, you gotta take the baby and the kid and the toddler all in with you, even if it's freezing. Yeah. Do it. Okay, not only, yeah, not only for the security or whatever, but in certain countries, you will get fined for abducting your ch children or yeah. um, ne neglig negligence. Yeah, negligence you'll be called so, on. Yep. Yeah, but I've seen it's a lady crazy. do this to a brand new three month old and then the other one must have been 
I don't know, like three or four. She left them in the car. The car was running. This is in New Zealand, right? Yeah. And she ran into the store to get her stuff that she bought. And I said, I was like, do you want me to help you? Because I was willing to go in. She's like, no, no, it's fine. And I'm like, no, it's not I know. The fact that the car is running. Like literally someone would jump in and drive off with your kids. No question. Like don't do that. I don't even think they would. I've seen people do it. I've seen people do it in the city that I'm in. I'm seeing Mm. them just, someone just jumped in the car and there was a baby in the back and they didn't take it out because it was below zero, Mm. you know, and then people are jumping on the car as it's trying to, it's, don't do it. They'll run into the fish and chips and get their fish and chips and the car, the babies are in the car. And the babies are in the car. Oh, I have been in a cafe in New Zealand where there was a one week old baby and they had, you know, in the car seat and it was sitting there and I couldn't. I don't know where the parents went. <laughs> and I was having a conversation. It was like a work thing. And I was trying to get, and I could not, I was so That's distracted. So where is the parents? How have they left this baby? I guess New Zealand is kind of like it was in the 70s, maybe. When we yes, were, like the 50s, or the maybe. 50s. <laughs> but yeah, don't do that in other don't countries. Don't do that in other countries. No. Just always keep your eyes on your kids. And I would say even uh, to a certain degree, like in certain areas, hold them by the hand. Yes. Like do not yes. not hold them and let them walk on their own. If you're in like Barcelona and certain areas, there are certain problematic cities where children being abduct- abducted is like a really bad problem. Yeah. And don't be thinking that you're over paranoid. Let your mama bear come out and hold those kids by Just, the hand and make sure at all times you have yes. them by the hand. Yeah. Yes. Just be safe about yeah. that. Even, I mean, I'm an American. I've only been in New Zealand for five years. And when last time I traveled back to the States, I was traveling through Chicago and I had my, uh, he would have been seven at the time with me. And I was pulled over by, so a police officer came up to me in Chicago airport, O'Hare, saying, your son is too far away from you. Wow. You need to bring him closer to you. Yeah. And I was like, you know, and I'm an American and I know this. In, in an airport. In an airport. Yeah. And I was like, everywhere. wow. Okay. And it's just because it is hard to just switch your mindset mm. from being comfortable with them running everywhere mm-hmm. to them being right next to you. And he's like, there's a good chance that he's going to get abducted. And he had his eye on certain people in there. Wow. And I was like, oh my God. Oh, yes. And so, so yes, I had different. my, I would not let go. Yeah, and you just even forget you like you walk into it and it's like you know because my experience like I'm on Air New Zealand flight and everybody's calm and they talk like this <laughs> and then the doors open in LAX and it's like <laughs> da, 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 and you're like oh my gosh that's hilarious I'm not in New Zealand anymore <laughs> yeah, no. and every country's gonna be different right yes. so there are some countries like let your kids roam and it's completely yes, safe that's you true. know but other countries just know the country you're going to yes and know you know. Just know it's just different. Good. Yeah. Good. This yeah. is such good advice. I, I'm just feeling so much better that you guys are knowing this now. <laughs> because I always think about when I think about you guys traveling. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. And then another tip is just know that, and we've talked about this a little bit already, but that people can be out to get you. People are there to take advantage of you. And if they sense that you're an easy target because you're just like... I don't know, you know, or you're just like doing things that are odd or like, you know, just you're an easy target and they're going to try to take advantage of you. Okay. So just try to be educated and, and know, and maybe travel with people that are from that country so that, you know, and that you don't look like this tourist going like this, walking around like this. Just don't just be aware. If you look like a tourist, you might get taken advantage of. Okay pictures you know everywhere <laughs> looking up at the tall buildings or whatever and that's okay to do obviously but yeah we must look like massive tourists in certain places it's hilarious <laughs> well certain times and especially you with your camera all like, the time videotaping everything <laughs> no i'm like thinking like looking at a map and being like where the where are we you know like whatever <laughs> right exactly so yeah, yeah it's just okay. really important that and for the most the part same. people are nice right. but there's a certain percentage that are so just be aware And have your guards up a little bit. And have your guards up, yeah. A little bit more than in New Zealand. A little bit, lot more than in New Zealand. I would say a lot more than in New Zealand. (laughs) Yeah, you know, so it's like I kind of just want to travel with you and just make sure that everything's okay because there's just been so many situations. So many situations where I've seen people getting taken advantage of, like with airlines or Mm -hmm. like their travel got messed up. And, well, they said I couldn't do that. Okay, no, 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 that's not acceptable. And, you know, it's okay to think that and to just kind of, call and fight back or just you know find your local american to help you out yeah there you go <laughs> that's probably the best way Call Tara. yep call me <laughs> or don't 
<laughs> anyway, it was so good. I'm so glad that we had this conversation. I feel so much better that you guys kind of know kind of the ins and outs of traveling outside of New Zealand. Uh, going to Australia, that should be fine. But when you're going out of Oceania area, just be aware of some of these tips and I hope this was helpful to you today. If you have any other tips from traveling that you want to share, please comment below and let us know because we don't obviously know everything. Pretty close though. <laughs> but anyway, so thanks for watching. Subscribe below and we'll see you next week. See you next week. time. See ya. Bye.